Thank you. The presumptive Biden administration has made it clear climate change will be a top priority. But it is important that Congress be involved in policy decisions. Eric Bame of Reason Magazine learns more from Josiah Neely of the R Street Institute. Eric? One of the more interesting things to keep an eye on as the Biden administration takes over next year will be uh, the White House's approach to climate policy. Obviously, that's a big priority for Democrats, but there's really two ways this could go. It could be a serious approach to a potentially serious problem, or it could be all about playing politics. And the key will be the way the Biden administration approaches the problem. Do they involve Congress or is this going to be all about executive orders and the executive branch? Hi, folks. I'm Eric Bain with Reason Magazine. Thanks for joining us on this edition of American Radio Journal. My guest today is Josiah Neely. He is a senior fellow at the R Street Institute, and he joins us now on the phone to talk about this. Josiah, thank you for taking some time and and joining us today. Thank you for having me. So you've got a piece at R Street uh, right now. People can check it out at rstreet.org. Executive action won't save the Biden climate agenda. The basic argument here being that Biden's got to bring Congress in on this, right? And we don't yet know what the final makeup of the Senate will be because we've got those two runoffs in Georgia. And so that's obviously a, a bit of an unknown here. But Congress needs to be involved in this process one way or the other. Yeah, that's right. And it is, I think, uh, frustrating if you are a president trying to get your agenda through Congress. And it's particularly frustrating if, as could well be, you have a, a Senate that's controlled by the opposition party. So th- there's always, I think, a temptation for presidents to try and do an end run around Congress and pursue through executive action what they would like to do legislatively, but that's generally not a good idea, and I think particularly in this case, the Biden administration is going to find that they just aren't able to do that. Yeah, they're, they're going to run into trouble, of course, possibly with the courts and all of that, too. And, and the, uh, the other thing, obviously, anytime you have executive orders, of course, they're only as good as, uh, you know, the length of your administration in many cases. We're, we're talking about this at kind of a high, right? I mean, we're talking about this uh, in, a, in a sort of meta way about, like, the way in which Biden must approach it rather than talking about the nuts and bolts of policy. But if if we can dive down into what the specifics of, of what a Biden climate policy might look like, how does having to get something through Congress change the the ultimate goals or the ambitions? I think a good way to look at this is to look at the past. The last time we had a Democratic administration was in 2008 with Obama. And, of course, he not only had uh, the presidency, but strong majorities in both the House and Senate. And he had an ambitious plan, the Waxman-Markey car, uh, cap-and-trade bill, uh, which he tried to get through, couldn't get through and ended up pursuing a scaled-down version of that through EPA called the Clean Power Plan, which was uh, specific to the electricity sector. And you would think that there's a lot of Obama people in the Biden administration incoming, it looks like. There's been, and I know before the election, there was a lot of a Clean Power Plan 2.0, right? So something that would be geared towards the electricity system, and uh, would try and get emissions down there, move us away from fossil fuel use, et cetera. There's a problem with that. Actually, there's, there's six problems, which is the six justices on the Supreme Court who have, in one way or the other, expressed skepticism about the ability of, to use EPA and the Clean uh, Air Act to achieve these ambitious climate goals. So for that reason, I think that is probably off the table for them, and they would have to either come up with something that can get Republican support in the Senate or uh, do something very minor in other agencies, uh, transportation uh, or or whatnot. But they're fairly limited in in terms of what they can do on their own because the courts are, I think, going to be more vigilant in checking executive power in this case. We are talking with Josiah Neely. He is a senior fellow at the R Street Institute talking about uh, what the the Biden climate agenda might be, the carbon agenda, the clean energy agenda, whatever you want to call it for the incoming uh, Biden administration. Josiah, just a, a minute or so left here. And and I want to try to ground some of this in, in practical policy here. Like, I mean, what is an example of something that in good faith a Biden administration could propose to a Republican Senate and that would actually accomplish something in terms of curbing carbon emissions or, or something like that? There's a couple of things I'd highlight. One is there's a growing private market for carbon offset, but there's 
issue, been issues with that market of trying to validate what you're really getting, and, and I think that a there have been proposals for some sort of uh, voluntary verification system that the government could do. That's possible. That's something that possibly you could get Republican support for. Another issue that is NEPA reform, the environmental review process before uh, infrastructure projects has gotten so out of hand that uh, both the Trump and Obama administrations have tried to make corrections to it. And it's increasingly something that is implicating clean energy infrastructure projects as well as other types of infrastructure. And so that, I think, is another area where you could have fruitful collaboration between the two parties. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. I like the idea of, of cutting red tape pretty much all the time, but especially on something like this. Like, hey, right, if we if we want to make clean energy projects uh, more competitive with traditional energy projects or dirty energy, you know, then, then make it make it easier to build those things. Like that obviously seems like a, a pretty clear uh, market-based uh, mechanism there. We are unfortunately out of time for today. Uh, Josiah Neely from the R Street Institute, thanks uh, so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And again, that is Josiah Neely. He is the uh, Director of Texas Policy and the Resident Senior Fellow for Energy at the R Street Institute. Check out his work at rstreet.org, including his latest piece, Executive Action Won't Save the Biden Climate Agenda. You can check out our coverage of uh, these issues, of the incoming Biden administration, everything else that's going on at Reason.com. And for Reason Magazine, I'm 